Okay, hello traders and welcome to this weekly strategy webinar. Today is Monday, November 15th, and I'm Michael Boutros, technical strategist with Daily FX. Great to be with you guys this morning. Generoso, Roland, Gary says sound and video all good. Welcome back. Thank you, sir. Good to be back. Believe it or not, guys, I think we only have maybe one or two webinars left for the year, um, as I'll be off for uh, the larger part of December. So, yes, the year is quickly approaching. Good to hear you guys. Stuart, Gary, uh, Ara, great to, great to see you guys this morning. So, we finally got it. Applause across the board. I hope you guys were in the ride last week. We've been talking about this propensity for a dollar breakout for months. The level that finally gave out, gave us our first thrust. We're already in the first level of resistance. So there's a lot to look at today. We'll start off with DXY, Euro, Aussie, um, dollar CAD, an interesting breakout and pullback today. Uh, gold, oil, big moves, uh, dollar yen, the outside per day reversal. And we'll take a quick look at Kiwi. Uh, it's a very similar setup to Aussie, but uh, I do want to refresh you on the levels there. So that's what's on my list. As always, any trade setups or questions, feel free to throw them on the message board at any time. Roland, Dollar Swiss, you know, I have been writing about that uh, with my guys. Yeah, I'll show you that Dollar Swiss setup for sure. All right, let's jump right in. So first things first, we've been looking at the dollar index with great intent. Again, here's what we were sort of factoring in on the weekly charts. This was published back on the 14th. The main focus was, or this was, sorry, this was published just the most recent one. Here was the, the, the first one back on the fourth. It was this region right here, 94.47, 94.65. We ran into it in the initial drive higher in September after breaking the objective yearly opening range, which again, remember, we called that and we said, your objective yearly opening range break just suggests a late year low, a late year high, right? And so here we are with the breakout. The first level was there. That held, okay, from September all the way through to last week. We finally got the pop higher. And here's what it looked like Oop, last week. The first level of resistance is right here. We're testing it now. It's 95.15. Don't think it'll hold long. That's just my humble opinion. Um, but that level is defined by the October 2017 high. It's way back here. You can see a very clear pivot across that plane over the last few years, okay? Just a hurdle. A breach above that, you're looking for the median line, currently comes in around 95.50s, but the big level is right up here, 96.10 into 96.50. Last year's objective yearly open and the objective 50% of the entire drop. All fact, right? Not Mike Boutros's opinion, not Daily FX's opinion, fact. So this is a major pivot in price. I'm very interested to see what happens if price extends into this zone to be an area of interest for possible topside exhaustion. But certainly first things first, you're at the first hurdle. Now, I also wanna point out to you guys, I've been showing you just this slope. Don't forget this 2011, 2011 excuse me, trend line we've been following. Every major pivot in the dollar for the last couple of years has been pivoting off that plane. Resistance, 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 breakout suggests, again, you see that extended snapback. But it also suggests that that plane now becomes near-term bullish in -vow. So if we're going to get this kind of reaction, this kind of reaction, this kind of reaction, any losses should be governed by that downside. Top side, you're looking into that 96 handle. All right. Ted says, Bitcoin, please. Oh, yes, Ted, where is my mind? Absolutely, yeah. I'll show you the Bitcoin levels today. And US 30, Steffi, I don't usually have um, the 30, uh, the Dow, but we'll take a look at SPX. If we have time, I'll take a look at that for you as well, sure. Good to see you in the room, Steffi. <laughs> All right, so that's the weekly chart from a 1,000 feet up. It's absolutely clear. You're coming into the week. You know, you could get some dollar pullback. Inevitably, you'd look to fade that, but we're at you know, a near-term pivot on the upside. Here's what dollar index looks like on the daily. Again, same pitchfork we've been following off the lows from June. Here was an exact two equal legs down, 100% extension. November high day close was a very nice pivot. That's where it dropped into the close of October before the rip. 
So this was the level of resistance we were talking about. And here was fr and here was last week's break and close, both on a daily and weekly marker above this key region. Okay, that now becomes key support. On the upside, 95.50s, remember we were just eyeing the slope, guess what's there? 2019 low day close, the LDC. It's 95.55, beautiful levels, guys. And again, on the top side, 96.10 into 96.50, that's, you know, that's your big whopper resistance. So daily charts, weekly charts, super clear, loving it. Loving it heading into the end of the month here. Uh, or heading to the uh, mid part of the month, we already got the monthly opening range break, which again, another instance uh, of a near-term topside bias heading deeper into November. Here's what it looks like on the scalp. So it's getting kind of messy here, but here's the you know slope we were following last week. Here was last week's break and thrust. We faltered at the 95.15 level. Again, I was hoping this thrust would get up there. Didn't happen. We're sort of meandering around 95.15. That's okay. If we pull back 94.65, 94.47, again, that's your key support. Don't think you necessarily get that low, but again, uh, not a trade recommendation, guys, from Daily FX or IG. Just my humble opinion. Uh, my focus is going to be on that stretch into 95.50, 95.48, if you get it. So 95.48, by the way, ends up being a 1618 of the advance off the low. So one, two, three. The 1618 extensions right there. Last week it converged on the upslope, which kind of was making me really excited to see if this this thrust could get there. A little bit of an exhaust, no problem. All things held constant. While above 9447, you're looking for that move into 9550. Questions. Hey Chris, great to see you in the room. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to Euro real quick. I'm not, re yeah, Ty, I got you. Looking for the dual screen. Here's the split. Side by side, intraday and daily chart. Uh, so Euro dollar, I haven't really big been a big fan of because the intraday targets aren't as clear. Look, here is the weekly. This one's super clear on the weekly, just like dollar is at resistance. Here's Euro at support. The level we eyed was 14.45 into 14.92. That was the 50 of the advance off last year's low. So if you recall, the DXY hasn't made to the 50 of its low. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a catch up here to play. Remember, 60% uh, roughly of this index is Euro. But big, big support at the 2019 open, 50% retracement and downslope support. So here's the pitchfork. One, two, three. Median line reaction is pretty decent as resistance. Break below the 25% parallel. Now it's resistance. You had an outside day, outside week, excuse me, reversal there. Kept the focus lower. This is big support. Downtrend support. Last year's, excuse me, 2019 open. And again, the 50. Now, if it breaks on the weekly scope, you know, the channel's pretty tight, just below. Maybe a thrust into 14 would do you well uh, for a tag of support, but you're basically looking for some downside exhaustion if you get into this region. The next major region is 112.90, just for the record. That's the 618 of the advance off last year's low. Huge, huge implications, right? But right now, I'm hard pressed. I really am looking to see what the what the Euro does into the weekly open um, for this week. Here's what it looks like on the daily chart. Okay, it was pretty clean. Again, same slope we're looking at with the weekly chart, pretty clean within the confines of this pitchfork. Really nice move. Once it broke 1490, that was pretty big and a break of the monthly opening range low. You start to look for acceleration and it did at first, but then here we are, right? Here we are on the back of a four day decline if today marks another decline. Long story short point, it's a little tired on the downside in my humble opinion. From a trading standpoint, if you're holding shorts, you're just bringing your stop down to 1415 or above, excuse me, 1450 or above. That would be sort of the prudent move. If you're looking for new exposure from here on, it's tough to warrant that move. You're sort of chasing, right? I still think there's, let me take a step back. 
if momentum drops into the over oversold territory and we break there, you see the kind of speeds you get in, in, in price and we're at a big lateral support, meaning we should be getting some sort of inflection here. If it breaks and momentum drops even further, you're probably going to see a quick order of that lower parallel before even a faster break. Uh, if it's going to fade, if it's going to exhaust, this would be your spot. Okay, so long story short, we're essentially looking for inflection. Here's what it looks like on the intraday chart. So even the start of the week, lots of hesitation around that 1445. Again, that's the objective 2019 open. So my base case scenario, again, not a trade recommendation from Daily FX or IG, is that you get another drop, maybe fade, maybe spike uh, before a larger recovery. Ultimately, you want to fade that. Uh, but I do think the downside just may be a little stretched to try to take anything new from here. So I'm putting this one on the shelf. We're watching this one. It's on the watch list. Uh, ideal scenario, you get some sort of ranging price action here to open up the decent month uh, weekly opening range, in which case once the break uh, gives you that directional bias. But the downside looks a little bit tired. Downside looks a little tired. So that's Euro, one and two, DXY and Euro. Any questions? Not many catalysts for a proper break. I agree. This week, it's kind of light from the U.S., uh, you do get GDP growth rate. This is going to be the uh, second um, estimate for the or the second quarter on quarter read. Expected to come in at 2.1%, just a slight uptick, nothing much there. Core inflation for Euro uh, zone later in the week is likely to be bigger. Is likely to be bigger. The inflation story continues to mount. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit as we head into some of the quote unquote inflationary hedges that you typically see during this time. Um, but you're right, the economic co calendar is pretty limited. Yes, sir, I got you, Ty. So for the dual screen, quick reminder, anyone new to the room, you can always take a quick snapshot of any of the charts you see presented here by clicking on the camera button on the top of your GoToWebinar screen. All right. Number three, here is Aussie dollar. Probably one of the best players over the last few weeks. Um, I hope some of you got, got a rip on this. This was published back on the 10th, uh, and we were essentially just really highlighting this major resistance level. I always try to provide the previous week's update for you guys so you can kind of follow through and see how we've been doing. Uh, this was the first thrust we published back on the 19th of last month. The big zone that we were highlighting was 75.31. Now, 75.31 was the 52-week moving average. The lows that you marked into the yearly opening range and downslope resistance. Once this high broke, we put on a quick extension, and it also ended up being the 100% extension, which converged on the 52-week moving average, which converged on the yearly opening range low, which converged on downtrend resistance. This was the clearest trade uh, last week. Here's what it looked like, or here's what it looks like now. So the level was 75.42 into 75.31, a 10 pip region of major critical resistance uh, turn the focus lower. First level we we're looking for was 73.85. A couple of monthly opens there. Nice, nice pivot in price. Again, that's the low week close from that drop that you made in May of 2017. Second level of, of, of significance was that 618 retracement, 7272, uh, excuse me. Here it is. We're there now. So you drop two and two on Friday. Make a little bounce. Sure. A little bit more upside to go? Yeah, no problem. But I don't want too much more. Here's what it looks like on the daily chart. Um, sure, Ty, just send it at the, at the info at instead. I saw your question there. Sorry, guys, to interrupt. Uh, Javagar, are we going to see 
your face during this kind of session, the broadcast in the future, <laughs> maybe. Um, yeah, I'm hoping once we get back to the office, uh, possible. It'd be a nice channel. Cheers for that. <laughs> All right. So look, uh, daily chart. Sorry, I'm getting I'm getting off topic here. Here's here's the daily chart. 618 retracement of the advance, 72.77. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, 72.77. Look what we did on Friday. So you didn't get much of a monthly opening range in Aussie. Fair enough. But we did come off major critical resistance. And this is another one that, you know, we've been tracking in the intraday charts. And the last time we were writing about this was right here on the 28th of October. Here's what the chart looked like into the 28th, guys. Here's what it looks like now, okay? We didn't know that it was gonna get the massive drop that we did, but we did see some divergence in momentum as price action was hitting a major, major resistance level. 100% extension off the low, again, entails two equal legs up, suggests you got the bigger risk to the downside on the turn. Here's what we got. So where do we go from here? Nice pat on the back, Mike, right? <laughs> where do we go from here? Well, from here, the intraday chart is really what's guiding my way. Here's the scalp that we showed you on that same, oh, wasn't on that same update. Here's the scalp that we showed you last week, or two weeks ago, we were out last week, right? On the decline, beautiful turn. So it wasn't just the 618 retracement at 72.77, it was also downtrend support, objective stuff taking a pitchfork off the high, low, high, right? Here's the balance. So this is what I've been showing, my guys. This is what I've been looking for. Initial support, uh, resistance 73.85, max 74.13. That needs to hold, okay? If we buckle back above this, you're, you're, you're diminishing the downtrend. So I came into the week looking for a possible entry here or here. And that's sort of still uh, the ideal you know, a possible scenario for a play this week. If this ends up being, you know, this, this just snuffs out, that's the maximum of the rebound. Oh, well, right? If we break the weekly open right here at 7320s, you're on your way back on track, right? Downside levels are 7277. This confluence zone is near 70, 7240s. This is the bigger zone here at 7226, 7220. It's really, really important. But that's sort of the idea is the top side bounce, if you get a little blow off, recovery, right? Rebound, possible areas of interest for exhaustion, bearish invalidation level. If we get back above 74.13, you're essentially, again, you're, you're marking near-term reversal. So. Questions? A range trader's dream channel. Yes, yes, scary. I agree. It's the interior levels were even ridiculous. You see this 75% parallel, <clears throat> excuse me, break, resistance, support of the 25% parallel, some very nice symmetry. Break of the parallel gets you the lower median line break. If this is legit, you still probably risk another spike. But we'll have to see how this pans out. So we've been watching 73.28. I just want to add to that, guys. The weekly open. Keep an eye on that level right there, 73.23. All right. All right, that's number three. Aussie, any questions on the Australian dollar? All right, you're clear on Aussie data this week, pretty much. Nothing to uh, note on that end. All right, next up is dollar CAD, number four. So this one's getting a little messy on the near term. It's not really my cup of tea at this point. The breakout was what I was really interested in last week, but we've kind of exhausted from then. So um, this was published back on the 11th, but before we get into that, here's the weekly chart, okay? So the big or the premise or the focus we can say that we've been talking about for quite some time is that 123 handle, 123.14 was the 2018 close low, okay? It was a decent pivot in price on the way down and on the way up, and it converged on downtrend support. You can see that we spent almost three weeks facing into that zone 
and we were looking for the breakout. The breakout, I'll show you in the daily chart, finally materialized last week. It was a decent run, ran right into the 38.2 of the drop from the yearly high. Let me just shift this up for you so you can see it. Okay, so that's uh, 125.40. Got the 52 week moving average, 125.34. You got the median line for the pitchfork we've been following for years now right there. So what's that mean? Does that put us back on the bearish trajectory? Is this the ideal scenario to look for the resumptive path? Could be, but at the same time, you're calling for a hell of a lot of dollar weakness when we just got the dollar breakout. So I'm more inclined to put this again near the watch list. You guys know we love dollar CAD when moves are clear. And I think the breakout like Aussie on the breakdown was really the play that most what was most clear in the technicals from here, dollar cat's starting to get a little sketched out. Here's what it looks like on the daily chart. So I was looking for either a turn from the 38.2, as you see where the circles were, right? Or exhaustion to the 50. We didn't get either, right? What the heck is that? So I'm looking for one, one simple thing. This is basic channel resistance turn support if we buckle back below that this slope is null and void okay uh, if this holds basically these lows into the u.s open you could see a bit of a a bit of, of a bit of a continuation 2618 is on the upside big big resistance at 27 massive resistance it's the yearly open and the 618 of the drop from august massively important level but first things first you know what's this pullback going to do here's what it looks like on the intraday chart so beautiful channel we were watching for quite some time. Wonderful breakout. Turned right ahead of that 2618 level. What is this? If this slope holds, it could be a break of resistance, test of support, and on we go. If this buckles below it, which dollar weakness prevailing suggests is probably the bigger risk here. Here's a September low, a decent pivot in price. That's got to hold. Okay, that's got to hold if dollar cad has more on this thrust. Now, speaking of dollar cad, you do get core inflation numbers on the 17th. Okay, those are supposed to show an increase of 4.7%. There's not even, uh, I don't have the forecast for the, uh, the core rate, but that hit 3.7 last month, right? Um, Inflation is really, it's becoming a bigger thing. We've been saying it for months. The headlines and the markets are just now starting to get a whiff of it, but, you know, prices tend to be very sticky. So we shall see. Any questions on Dollar Cat? Now, obviously, a lot of people talk about Dollar Cat and they move over into the corollary with oil. So let me just go over that for you real quick. Um, Here is the side-by-side uh, -side tie. So the oil levels are interesting in that I do think they are possibly for you know foreshadowing further weakness here. I know it's not the popular trade, and I do I'm bullish oil on the longer term, but we can't just marry biases. We have to be receptive and astute to what price action is saying. Uh, are you perhaps doing sterling, Gail? Geez, Louise, I don't have sterling on here? Well, I do now. <laughs> I got you. Um, but oil, yeah. So here's the weekly charts, guys. And there's no surprise where we turned from. That was our base case scenario was 85.61 was absolutely critical. That was the 2013 swing low uptrend resistance on a slope that we've been following all year long. Even on the downside, I mean, this thing is just ridiculous. So, yeah, we were looking for the downside into slope support. The last couple of weeks look kind of hairy in that you haven't really made the break. Um, you know, you kind of wanted to see something like this, corrective action lower, but you didn't. So, you know, there's a lot of chop here, and this is where retail gets chopped up. Okay. Um, Javago, 
CAD yen is a very good comparison as well. He's saying when you're looking at oil, I see you looking at dollar CAD. And my question is, why not to look to CAD yen for oil? Yeah, well, CAD yen, the, vo the, the yen crosses in general have been super volatile. Uh, CAD yen is a decent player. Just remember, when we're near term trading, we're looking for really quick moves. So we want to take the tightest spreads. And for the average retail trader, a CAD yen cross is still a bit too. Javaga, you're a bit, <laughs> you've been with us for a while. So you're a bit more um, uh, trained in this, but you know those crosses, guys. If you are newer to the market, are really it's more of it's more of a danger. You know, it's better that you kind of get your strategy and get your your feet real steady in pairs that are a little bit more liquid, maybe not as volatile. But I'm all over it, Javago. Between me and you, I mean that's that's where a lot of the action is. But in any event, oil, big big resistance level, right? This would mark our third weekly decline it's obviously we've just started the week so that means nothing but we did already get three as of last week this would be the fourth here's what it looks like on the daily chart okay it all started i can start a story i write a book it all started with the outside day reversal and it was right here not only was it an outside day reversal it was an outside day reversal off the monthly opening range highs off of former uptrend support, turned resistance, and a failure to breach the objective high day close, HDC of the year at 83.69. That's rejection. That's rejection. So, you know, the initial inclination that we had right after that day was this is perfect, break of support. Rally into former support turned resistance and an outside day reversal off the monthly range highs, you would take that bet nine times out of 10. Now, it started to exhaust into Thursday and Friday, couldn't make it through the 75% parallel, and we bailed. You know, it's, it just looks a little like it, it, it couldn't get any push. Maybe it was too early. There's still some room here. Look what happens today. If we close below that slope, again, the one thing I want to entail here is that the monthly opening range is preserved. We don't have a break as we do in a lot of other trades, but oil tends to preserve and deal with, you know, play with opening range strategies pretty well. Don't take my word for it. Here was the opening range back in September. Set a high, test the lows, test the highs, took a couple of days, but once it broke, tested as support and off we go into a late month high. Last, last month in October didn't last very long. You had the opening range kind of panned out into the seventh. It broke on the 11th late month high so we use these strategies you know as a way of adding to the conviction that we're seeing in price and at this point if we break the monthly opening range the downside yeah you're looking for correction okay we are bullish again for the for for the record but we are at uptrend resistance meaning on the medium term you're looking to fade weakness on the near term, the risk is for a dip lower. Okay. Javago says, I understand your point now with respect to the spread, right? So I'm just trying to look out for, you know, the viewers of this program. A lot of a lot of them are a little bit newer in the market. Some of them are just getting their fet in this, getting their feet in this strategy. So you don't want to just uh you know throw a loaded gun or an AR to them. You kind of want to give them a little pea shooter first. <laughs> so, where does the pitchfork start from, please? Ted, it's from the lows that we made back here in um, November of last year and the highs. And this is a modified pitchfork. So what I do is you're just looking, sometimes you don't even need the pitch, right? You're looking just to match the slope. So you take basic slope resistance, you draw that slope, and then you mirror a pitchfork to that range, to that same gradient and that will give you the median line and the lower parallels does that make sense ted says okay i got it picture awesome awesome great all right so uh that's the daily chart guys it gets even better here's the scalp <laughs> this is the pitchfork we we just threw on here last week i told you you know i didn't really know if it was gonna pan out because when you first draw your pitchfork on the stretch, you need to see inflection, right? We don't just draw high, low highs and hope for the best and start trading it. No, we need to see that price is actually respecting that gradient. 
So here's a basic high, low, high, median line support, 75% parallel resistance, median line support, turn right ahead of it, median line support. If this breaks down lower here, the monthly opening range lows and key support into 7634, 7687, that's a 2018 high and a basic 38.2 to the drop. So the levels are well mapped out. Now, what I what I what I have here, and I want to just caution you again, is based on the lows. So as the lows continue to drop, you're going to continue to drop that that retracement. I just had it there as a reference point, resistance of 38.2, sort of bearish invalidation here at the 618. But obviously, this retracement means nothing. As price drops, you're going to continue to move that. But it continues to move on trend. I got a question last week of someone asking me, what are the circles that you have on your charts? The circle highlights when that level is significant, right? So we highlight convergences. So this is a 618. It's a significant level in and of itself because a lot of my strategy has to do with Fibonacci ratios, and that's typically a decent inflection point. But this is when it's important because it's on slope. So if we get a rally into the 16th, 17th, that's where it needs to be terminated. That's where it needs to basically exhaust same thing here if we get the break to the downside this is a key level we've been watching but this is when it's important heading into the 17th again so it's just a reference point again you know highlighting where slope converges on lateral on lateral support resistance okay <clears throat> excuse me uh, do you use RSI 40 or 60? I use, uh, I don't even go that high. This is like the inputs are 14. This is just a two week RSI. For this is a two hour, I'm sorry. So this is the 14 on the daily. E either way, either way. Listen, uh, guys, I don't want everyone to jump into RSI with such conviction. This is there as a reference. It's not there to trigger a trade. It's not there to dictate trend or directional biases. It is there as a reference to further add evidence for higher conviction on your trade. That's all. So whether it's divergence, whether you've been seeing support around 40 on the uptrend and you think that's really strong, there's a tell there, but don't get too married to it. All right. I went on a little tangent there. I hope you guys enjoyed. So that, that was oil number five. Uh, let me jump into uh, gold number six. Breakout, breakout, breakout. Here's gold. Okay. Our last couple of updates on the weekly charts have been basically highlighting. Oh, there's the daily charts. So the weekly charts are always in there as well. Has basically been highlighting this major area of resistance. Okay. Here was support and bullish inval. Here was resistance. 1738, we got that one stretch there, it held, bounced higher. Obviously, the break above the 52 week moving average has us right here at 1825. That was huge resistance, huge, forget this. So this breakout constitutes a breach above last year's downtrend, a breach above this year's high week close i know you guys forgot about it, is in january that's actually where the high was registered the high we close for the year is right there at 1749 so 1725 broke 1749 broke excuse me 1849 broke and we closed above it all things held constant that's a breakout that's a breakout now it might not be so apparent here on the weekly chart but here's what it looks like on the daily. Beautiful. Ty saying descending uh, triangles, oil and gold mirror break. Very similar breakouts. Um, I think the descending triangle for, uh, argument can be made, sure. I know a lot of people are looking at that. Um, we had so much lined up here, guys. The 618, again, the drop. You had the high day close from July, which... You did get that one close higher, which gap lower, but we stood with that sick region of resistance, one touch, two touch, three touch, breakout. That's exactly what you wanna see. It's exactly what you wanna see. Now from here, 
excuse me, levels to note. You're constructive above 1825, near term support 1849, topside breach from here, you're looking for 1898, and big, big resistance into 19, 1922. Okay. If you could only trade off one chart for gold, this would be the one I would stick with the daily chart. Okay. Because they've just been so clear. And again, a little messy here, but I just wanted to highlight one thing also. This is the trend line. Whoop. This is the trend line from 2019. Un, deux, trois, right? Three touches. Little br break and a mishap there in, in August, but look where it, what happened. Break, acceleration was resistance, was resistance, was resistance, breakout. It called the breakout earlier than the 1830 breakout based on this slope right here. So yeah, I should probably put that in a different color to uh, make that easier to see. Right, so you can see the pivot break there, acceleration. So any way you slice it, it's a breakout, right? We broke into overbought territory. It's the first time we broke into overbought territory since May. Remember, the break into overbought territory is not the fade because things can stay in overbought for days, weeks, months. It's the buckle back below 70 that would be risky, okay? So watch this today. If we fail again to close 1865, which is the basic 6786 retracement of the decline, we haven't been able to close once above that. If we fail here again and momentum sinks back below 70, sure, you get the near-term pullback, no problem. Uptrend resistance, I'll show you in a moment. But at the end of the day, you're constructive above 1825. Here's what it looks like on the near-term charts. Okay, so this is the slope we were watching last week. Look at this. <laughs> Here's the 786 retracement, 1865, still resistance. Here's that slope from last week, just, you know, pressing it. At the end of the day, if it buckles lower and breaks, 1851, there's your key support. 1825, 1830. Top side breach above the slope. Here's what the near-term structure. This is just a series of parallels, guys, off of this slope. Parallel. Parallel extending off the highs from back here, right? Insane. 1865 is resistance intraday. 1875 would be the breach that would onset. And again, your yearly opens 1898, key resistance, 1920s. Outstanding trade, just beautiful, beautiful levels. Questions on gold. Now, there's still a lot of inflation data on tap. Again, the UK has got inflation data, Eurozone inflation data, Canada inflation data, right? Um, into the latter part of the week. So things that may spur gold, technically, ultimately a pullback, we still want to fade. But right now, the upside is at risk from well below 1865. Questions? All right, that's number six. All right, let me see. Um, I had one more thing to do on dollar yen. And then Kiwi, just just a quick note. So dollar yen was number seven. Um, listen, it's kind of a mess on the near-term chart, but here's what I want to show. Oop, we'll hit Bitcoin in a moment too. Here's what I want to show you on the weekly. This thing, pretty radical as well. Do you remember this chart? I haven't touched it. I haven't touched it since two weeks ago when we were last year in the webinar. The basic resistance level we talked about, 1455, 1499, still capping the yearly high. Pullback, we were looking for support either at slope, and this is just insanely clean, it's freaky, but this was bullish invalidation, and still is, and still is. So even if you were to get a spill all the way down here, the trade is still constructive all above 1160. Key resistance is still 15, basically 11, 1450, 1490, excuse me, into 1450. So you kind of get a scheme of where we are, right, in trend. We've hit uptrend resistance. We bounced off uptrend support. Is that the extent of the correction? When we break through? That's what we're questioning here. Here's what it looks like on the daily. So it could be a bull flag formation, as you can see here. Um, all I want to focus on here is the fact that the monthly opening range hit into major resistance before pulling back. Last month's or last week's rally failed at the 
monthly open. Okay, the monthly open, just for record, is 1405. It's right here. That's what these dots are. So last week we rallied right into the zone and then failed. What happened on Friday? That's very interesting. An outside day reversal. Okay, so I actually still, you know, tend to think you might get a pullback here, but at the end of the day, if you break this downtrend, you still have major resistance to deal with. Okay, and that is pretty darn close to the monthly opening range highs. So this is the abomination. It's, you know, affectionately earned that reputation. If it pops higher, you can still get a failure here before a pullback. Not my cup of tea, but that's sort of what the technicals are suggesting. Um, Gary says 113.38 looks key. What do you got at 13.38? 13.38? Here's the intraday chart. I got 1332 as the 618 of the rally. That's on downtrend uh, support. So look, here's a pitchfork. And again, for someone who was asking earlier, I think was that, uh, I'm not sure if it was Gary or Trivago, with regards to the slope, another one where we just matched slope to basic trend line resistance. And if you match that slope properly, 25% parallel support, 25% parallel support, lower parallel inflection breach false break of the upper parallel right so what is this do you correct lower for deeper just correction to 1360 and then maybe the median line at 1338 which comes in with the 618 retracement or do you break out and if you do break out you're still into major resistance so i'm neutral on this again it's on the watch list i don't Ideal scenario, again, a pistol to my head. I mean, I don't trade with a pistol to my head, thank God. But if there was a pistol to my head, Boutros, I'll blow your brains. I'd say fade, you know, a stretch towards that high, looking for a deeper pullback, then maybe look to base it into that 1338. Uh, Eric, or was that you, Gary? I like I like that 13, you know, 30 to 40 region in general. Look to the left. Look to the left. You always want to make a habit, guys. If anytime you're looking for a lateral inflection point, especially if it's a fib or a moving average, Look to the left. Your eyes should always be tracking to see what previous price action has done at this region. And you can see some decent inflection. So yeah, that's, that's my take on dollar yen. That's my take on dollar yen. We're, we're at downtrend resistance or just below downtrend resistance on the near term front into the open of the week. All right. Okay. Um, I do see your question, Mohan, and there was a lot of other guys looking for sterling. So let me take a, a quick segue here and go into the British pound. So sterling was um, a really, really decent call in the weekly chart. This thing had a beautiful turn. It was kind of precarious, but the slope was still pretty good. And this is the turn I'm talking about. We reversed, again, 52-week moving average, uptrend resistance. But ever since this yearly high, we've been in this decent pitchfork. And once we broke there, the focus was 13, uh, excuse me, 134.90 and 133. So 134.90 we pushed into. Last week we tried to rebound above it and closed lower, but you didn't quite get a tag of the lower parallel. So what do you do with this? Some cautionary notes. A, this is the first momentum break below 40 since last year this whole decline in, mo in 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 sterling this year has kept weekly rsi above 40. that's something to pay attention to this is the first break below remember strong uptrends you want to see support into 40. in strong downtrends you want to see resistance ahead of 60. and here you are with the downtrend resistance at 60. that broke you start to see a support around 40. whoa red flag maybe maybe so please repeat what kept weekly rsi low sorry i missed that ty i'm not sure i get your question i'm just talking about the tendencies that you want to see in rsi right resistance at 16 small and strong downtrends support at 40 and strong uptrends this break is the first market change in behavior for the momentum oscillator 
Here's last week's uh, price action. Again, intro week, we did try to push through. It failed on the downside as well. Resistance on the weekly chart, still 13, uh, keep saying 13, 34.94. Key support still 33 into 32.50. Absolutely paramount. It's the 618 of the advance off last year's low, the 100 off the high, and last year's open, all converging on the downtrend. So that's the critical support level on the weekly charts. Zoom in, here's what the daily looks like. So I have us at near-term downtrend support here as well, just didn't quite clip it. I would have loved, and I was looking on this on Friday, if this was sort of an outside daily reversal. You didn't, qu you didn't quite get it. Um, Sterling tends to do pretty good with the outside daily reversals. Um, you can see the last couple here have been very uh, significant in calling some pretty decent highs in price. So I was looking for that on Friday, we didn't quite get it. So here we are again, stumbling at the former close low, former low day close for the year. That's 3240, uh, that's 3425. Look there today, okay, look there today. If we close above that today, the risk is for a little bit more of an upside swing towards the 2017 high day close. Again, 3490, uh, basically 35 handle. So that's sort of what the focus would be on today into the US trade session. Here's what it looks like on the near term. This pitchfork we've been following a little bit or um, unorthodox, okay? A little bit of a poetic license here. We got the low high high stretching to give us this advance, this decline. You can see just really nice inflection here along the parallel as well. Resistance, if with that is support, you still risk a rally back into 3490s, maybe even higher into the upper parallel, but this should, cap the advance if sterling is heading lower core inflation data due on the 17th okay on a break lower a couple of things to note there's going to be this slope which is variable that is this slope right here then the 100 percent extension from the decline off the high is 33 that is paramount that is paramount Does it need to close above the previous day's wick for an outside day reversal? Yeah, Gary, it does. So it depends. Let me take a step back, Gary. There, you know, I always tell you guys, technical analysis, it's not a science, it's an art form. Like there are people who would suggest, yeah, as long as you covered the candle, that's an outside day reversal. I'm more of a, you know, purist. Like I need that kind of outside day reversal. I need that kind of outside day reversal. And again, I don't, you know, don't take my word for anything, Gary. Look at it yourself and you tell me. When you see these kinds of formations, you actually do tend to get a higher percentage of follow through. Um, so I guess it's open to interpretation, but that's my take. So cheers on that. He says, okay, cool, <laughs> right on. All right. Um, so that is Sterling. Possibility for a little bit more of an upswing, but you're looking at 35 being a pretty critical region of resistance. I do wanna take a step back real quick Got about 10 minutes left on the session, guys. Number uh, nine here is going to be uh, Bitcoin. So here's what we're looking at. So recall that I showed you guys this last uh, two weeks ago, the 2018 parallel, right? What we're basically looking at that price analog is the um, October breakout of last year, right? So all through August, September, October of 2020, you got that crunch broke out into late October. Here is the rally. You got a similar scenario here where the October month was crunch, 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 breakout here. If we mirror, take an analog of that price action in, in pink here, it would suggest, again, a period of prolonged gains with some decent minor setbacks, but nothing like what we saw here earlier this year. The level we've been focused on has been 66,325 into 65,096. This is the record, former record high from back in April. This is the 618 extension of the advance, whoop, of the advance off last year's low. Here's the reference points, just so you can reference those. So last year's low, this year's high, this year's low. 
So we've been talking about that 66, 65,000 re region for a while. You did actually mark a single daily close above it before, before bucking back. Look, here's the monthly open. Here's key support. You constructive above 58,900. Bullish invalidations at 53. Unfortunately, that's way down there. Top side breach from here. You're looking for 77,600. You're looking for 89,600 on the upper parallel. Okay. Not a trade recommendation from Daily Effects or IG, just suggestive price action of what the price analog from 2018 looked like. And if we were to follow that same type of breakout pattern, that's basically what we'd be looking for. Questions on Bitcoin? Okay, there's a quick look there at Bitcoin. So let me jump back into the FX front and take your questions. Roland, you had a question on dollar Swiss, and I do think dollar Swiss was worth looking at. You had a decent move there um, with a breakout. So on the near term, or excuse me, on the long term, here's the weekly charts. The basic key region of support that we were highlighting for the last couple of months was 9080 into that 52 week moving average, which is like basically 91, right? Here's what it looks like decent pivot in price. So we were looking for inflection there. You never quite actually got it. The low registered um, at 90.84, four pips off uh, before finally rebounding. So the rebound failed yesterday, uh, last week at uptrend resistance. So the question becomes, where are we from here? Do we get a kickback again for another buy attempt or does this inflect straight up into that high week close? Um, from back in, in September. Here's what it looks like on the daily charts. And this is this is what I've been actually been more interested in following. Uh, I think it's a little clearer. So here's the daily, right? 9090 was the 618 extension off the high. More importantly, basic trend line support off the yearly lows. One, two, three. This was critical. We literally highlight it this day. Okay, rallied right into the monthly open, stop traffic. That's still the 618 retracement of the advance off the lows from back here in August. That ended up holding the entire monthly opening range until we broke out on November 10th. And that breakout not only cleared the monthly open and that 618, but technically it actually closed above downtrend resistance. So back on that breakout on the 10th, that's what shifted the focus higher. 38.2 was 91.90. This is the pivot point again, missed just a couple of pips, 92.40. I think the high was 92.37. Yeah, 92.37. Um, so it turned to slower. So again, what is this, Mike? Now you've had a four-day rip. If it broke downtrend resistance, does that mean we're looking to buy? Here's what the intraday chart looks like. Don't really like from these levels. Essentially, you're either looking for a buckle back in towards that parallel, which converges on that high, high of the month, sort of the monthly opening range highs. Oh, is that November 1st? Okay, so maybe 9170s, you look to fade that. At the end of the day, you need to break above 92.22 to look for resumptive key resistance is 92.60, 92.70. So low, high, low. Ideal scenario, yeah, gun to the head. I, you look for a little bit more of a, of a pullback to fade. Again, not a trade recommendation from Daily FX or IG, guys, just my humble opinion. This looks like a breakout of multi-month, multi-week downtrend resistance. You're still constructive above 91.50. All right, cool, thanks. I'm still hopefully bullish and waiting for the right pullback level. Roland, cheers to that. Ty, here's the duel for you, sir. All right, um, that is Swissy, number 10. SPX, who was asking about that? So here's what SPX looks like. Um, forget this for a second, 4707. Someone from uh, the desk was asking me earlier today, if this rips, what's the level you're looking for? It's 4707, I'll show you why in a second. But here's uh, here's the slope I just wanted to, to highlight, right? Um, this is yearly uptrend, uptrend 
we broke below yearly uptrend support, rebounded as resistance, cleared almost two equal legs down, broke the down channel. We stayed on that slope as resistance for four days before breaking higher, and now it is support. The same slope as support. So to keep things clean, look at that. You can't make this stuff up. So yeah, you're, you've buckled back above the major inflection zone, the major inflection slope of the year. Um, I mean, that's all you need to know. <laughs> the high to close, 46.16 near-term support. Um, you could probably slap, get rid of that right there. So this is sort of your bullish inval, okay? Why? It's not only the 100% extension off the lows. Forget the HDC, because it's not the HDC anymore either. But your monthly open is 4609. So your monthly open and your monthly opening range lows are 4609, 46. That's key support. On the upside, it's all slope from here. There's nothing to work with. It's like 4740s, I want to say. Here's what it looks like on the intraday chart. 4707 is the level I'm looking for right now. If this is going to break out, 1618 at the advance converges on some fancy slopes. Don't worry about all that. Basically, this is the level to watch for the breakout. If you get it, the slope is on point. Here's what it looks like on the 240s chart. And let me just zoom it out for you. Again, the 120. All right, it's a quick look there at the SPX. <clears throat> uh, Kiwi, yeah, I, I, I didn't, and do you have a view on Ether? So Suzanne, I, I do have a opinion on Ether in that I do think it's still gonna, it's gonna follow suit. Um, Let me just bring you. Let me just bring you my charts on this. Hold on one sec. Here's uh, crypto. Here's the one I use. So the longer term level looks very similar. Obviously, this is kind of like a little late tracker. So this is the same type of uh, price analog that we eyed out from again October of last year and September of last year. Uh, this was a big breakout. This was a big breakout. So you pivot above it, you test it as support, and you rally higher. Again, it's a very similar scenario in that it's constructive, but it looks a little tired. The price analog would suggest the possibility, the threat of some back and forth before you actually see the next like major leg. So expect some some volatility, but I'm constructive above 39, uh, 38, 39.58. This is sort of the key zone of support that would need to hold on a major pullback. Levels on the upside would be 63.88. All right. There's a quick look there on uh, just shotgun approach on, on Ether. Um, Kiwi. I just want to show you this on the on the weekly chart was very an, a stellar a stellar stellar rejection of resistance. Uh, my problem with Kiwi is where it's it's halting right now. If this is a break of resistance and this is the test of support, that could be the terminus of it. Now I happen to think that you do you do eventually make it down to the sixty nine sixty zone. This is massive support, but right from here, it's just not my cup of tea. I loved the turn. I just don't have a fix on it from right down here. Here's what it looks like on the daily again, real quick. I'm over on time, guys. The daily chart had beautiful term from resist from support last week. You know, ideally the median line holds if it is heading lower. Um, but I think we get a further clarity on that. Here's the near term chart. Again, a break of downtrend support. Typically the sharpest part of the decline was right, but there's 618 support in the rally. If we're gonna fail, you're basically looking for something here, right into 71, just ahead of 71 maximum but you get the picture all right guys i am way out of time and losing my voice so i'm gonna have to wrap it up there suzanne says awesome stuff cheers mike great week to you roland says thanks i learned a lot this year following your webinars every week and staying uh, up um, late is definitely worth it roland my pleasure and thank you guys for keeping this daily effects is most widely attended webinar week in week out best of luck trading this week there's gonna be a lot of inflation data a lot of um 
talk about the inflationary stories. Don't forget in the U.S., retail sales probably going to be the biggest hit. That's on the 16th, uh, which is tomorrow. Uh, so that should spur some volatility. But the basis of the story is that the dollar may need a little bit of a pullback here. Ultimately, another opportunity to possibly partake on the long side. Iman Generoso, Suzanne, thank you all. Have a great week. I'll see you. Um, I might not be here on Monday. Keep your eyes on the on the uh, MB4X Twitter handle. I'll let you guys know what the uh, what the webinar schedule looks like. Cheers.